In this lecture, we will take a look on headerless or cloaked encrypted archives. Headerless files in CrocoCrypt file are encrypted using password-based encryption and I will show you now why that is. First of all, let us create two encrypted archives using the password-based encryption you already know. That I use a single file here doesn't matter. It would be the same for archives using multiple files. So I encrypted this file, this image called desert, and I will call this now VBE1, and I will do it a second time. You will get in a minute why I do this. Because at the end, if you don't know what headerless means, you probably don't understand the forensics behind looking at those archives. I will now open these two archives in a simple editor. So file 1 I put in here. And for comparison, file 2 I put in the second one. And if you now look at these two archives, which contain the same plain file, you will notice that you see equal bytes in both files. So I will mark the bytes in this file. Here you can see them. After that, if you would even compare it with an hex editor, there are no equal bytes. This equal part is simply the file header, meaning you find the magic number of CrocoCrypt file and CrocoCrypt file knows which kind of archive especially which kind of crypto provider was used for encryption. I will now jump to the end of the file to show you that there are no matching bytes even at the end of the file. So there you go. So I want to highlight that even the same plain file is used to encrypt these archives. You can tell from the encrypted files, from the encrypted archives, that they have matching content. This is because of the crypto parameters we learned in the introduction are different. Even so, the same password is used to encrypt both files. I will go up again. Without the header, these files would look like a collection of random bytes. You can't see any pattern in these files. So if I would just remove the header here, you would not be able to tell what kind of a file that is. Of course, the file extension gives a good idea, but if you would rename the file and remove the header, you wouldn't be able to tell what kind of a file that is. And this is exactly the idea behind headerless or cloaked files. So let's create a cloaked file. In this case it's also using not only AES for encryption but also TwoFish. So it's a cascading encryption. Again, it works password based, so I have to put in my password here. Because it's using cascading encryption with two encryption algorithms, it takes a little bit longer to encrypt it. And as you can see, by default, CocoCrypt file isn't using any file extension. So I call this now cloak1. And if we now compare this, again in this editor, to the to one of the other files we've used before, you see that the standard header isn't there anymore. And again, we are encrypting a second time. Again, headerless. And I call this now cloak2. And let's see Let's compare cloak1 and cloak2. And as you can see, there's not only no header, but the files are completely different. I can jump to the end and believe me, in the middle it's the same. You won't find matching bytes or matching bytes would only be there by any chance. Don't get confused, by the way, by the line numbers you see here because the editor breaks by any line break a new line and since these are bytes, random bytes, there might be a different uh, number of lines, but it doesn't mean that the files have different size. As you can see, they both 
have the same size. And uh, now you know why cloaked files have to be used with password-based encryption because when you use a public key based approach you have to put in some recipient information which public key has been used to encrypt the file. With password based encryption all the password to key derivation parameters are random values. The iteration count would be a simple integer but it's not stored by CrocoCrypt file. So only real true random vectors are in the encrypted archive. This is why decrypting means it's a trial and error approach. Since cloaked files don't have a file extension, you can't do anything with them. Windows will ask you something, which application to use, but of course that doesn't make any sense. This is why CrocoCrypt file ships with the decrypt cloak file application. You have to choose explicitly what's a cloak file because it has no file extension. This is the intention of this cloaked file that nobody knows what it really is. So I will choose this one archive now, cloak1, and the decryption if I put in the right password works as you know from the standard password based encryption. It takes a little bit longer because again it's decrypted by trial and error. And you see here one hint which I will show you next. So the decryption has worked. If I do the same now and I put in the wrong decryption password, then CrocoCrypt file won't be able to tell me that I have put in the wrong password because it can't even tell it's a CrocoCrypt file archive. So I would override if it would be correct. I put now in a wrong password. The decryption process here would now take forever because it will never end. It can't find a valid key for the key derivation because I have put in a wrong password. So I have to cancel this decryption because it would never end. I think you got a good idea that this is a very special kind of file format that's not used for standard purposes. But for instance, if you want maximum privacy, you can use that. For instance, if you create a giant archive of images that you want to upload to a cloud backup or something like that, then the cloaked file might be your choice. You might have noticed also an additional version of cloaked files here in the drop down box, which is output padding. That means if you want to enhance the privacy of your data even more than just using headerless files, you can add additional data at the end of the file to hide maybe two small archives. So again I will create a cloaked file here. Please note I have encrypted the same file as before. And as you can see, I call this now cloak with padding. The file is one megabyte in size, which is bigger in comparison to the other ones. And I will open this again in an editor to show you that there are just additional random bytes at the end of it. And this format allows to add additional data. CrocoCrypt file will simply ignore this when decrypting the file. So to show you this, I will just now add some letters which is of course only for demonstration purposes. You could use any random number generator now to add additional bytes, like under Linux. You could even enhance it to one gigabyte. It, it wouldn't be a problem for CrocoCrypt file to find the original data. So I save this now. And again, we'll try to decrypt it. So put in the right password this time. And you will see even though that I have changed the archive, because I've just added something at the end of it, that the decryption will work. And the decryption has successfully finished. And as you can see, we have access to the plain file. 